How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Bobby Six Killer, and welcome to a new series we're going to be doing on Exit Corners. To be honest, I don't actually know if it's long enough to do a series, but I'm assuming it probably is, especially with my puzzle solving abilities, if there are puzzles. Anyway, this is another killing game style game. I think it was first pointed out to me by Miracle Moon on the Discord server. Also, if you're not a member of the Discord server, there is a link in the description. There's lots of great people there. Check it out. Anyway, so we're going to jump into Exit Corners because apparently it's very good. Uh, it is a um a flash game or whatever it's uh it's, you play it in browser or whatever i'll put a link in the description so you can go check it out for yourself but i say we jump in uh, we're gonna do half hour episodes also as usual and uh we're just gonna play it until we finish it i don't even know if there's sound i'm not getting any sound out of it but i guess we'll find out chapter one the four elements hotel oh there's definitely sound So, what's your name? Excuse me? I know nothing about you. I'd like to remedy that. So, what's your name? Ink. My name's Ink. Oh, what an unusual name. And where are you from, Ink? I'm from Belbridge. Still there, unfortunately. I'm enrolled in the local university. Ah, Belbridge. Quaint little town, isn't it? Nice and quiet. For the most part, yeah. Quiet. Do you like it there? No, not really. The second I graduate, I'm out of here. Until then, my life is going to consist of good books and cheap beer. I see. Say, do you hear the wind? Kinda. I can hear you just fine, but the wind sounds sort of... muffled? Distant? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? I'm dreaming. Things don't need to make sense. Oh, how can you be so sure that you're dreaming? Well, for starters, I'm looking myself square in the eye right now. I mean, unless there are two of me, that is impossible. And there's only one Ink Greer. Trust me, I checked. You checked? <laughs> um, hello? Oh, someone's calling for you, it seems. Hey, wake up. Thanks for the chat. Oh, come on. Ink's cheek stung. Ink found himself sitting upright on a cheap mattress, half buried in sheets and sore all over. He went for a twisting stretch, placing a hand on his ar arching back. I ought to give myself a round of applause. Falling asleep, fully clothed, jacket and everything. That's a new low. I must have passed right out. Ink took a moment to compose himself. As he wiped the sweat from his face, his eyes were drawn to a figure sitting next to him. It was a girl. Still drowsy, Ink stared at her in a hazy stupor. Morning, stranger. Sorry about the whole pinching you awake thing. You're a heavy sleeper, I guess. Anyway, I know this is sort of sudden, but, um... I was hoping you'd know what's going on. Where are we, exactly? The question caught Ink off guard. He did his best to ignore what he assumed was a hangover and tried to come up with an answer. Wait a sec. Where am I? Um, a very nice hotel room? A hotel? It's a little old fashioned, but there's no mistake in it. How the hell did I wind up in a hotel? Either I got smashed last night or... Hey, are you okay? You seem really out of it. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a bit disoriented, that's all. Nick examined his new companion. Who was she? Did I sleep with her or something? I mean, that'd be the obvious assumption. I guess there's only one way to know for sure. Listen, uh... Do you happen to remember anything from last night? Oh, well, um... The girl trailed off. Ink couldn't help but steal an admiring glance during the silence. She sure is cute, whoever she is. Wonder where we met? Ink was desperate to know more about her. He could make a quick guess, judging from her age and appearance, he had a hunch that she was a student. She too was a student at Belbridge University. We probably met on campus. No, wait, that couldn't have been it. If we got a room, then we must have met down, downtown somewhere. Why can't I remember anything? I'm sorry, I can't remember a single thing about last night. And I'm pretty sure I don't know you either. She can't remember anything either, huh? Give me a break. Ink managed to crack a smile in spite of his frustration. The least he could do is try to say something to try and quell 
the uneasy feeling in his gut. Might as well introduce myself. I'm Ink. Well then. Nice to meet you, Ink. <laughs> you know, I don't get nice to meet you all that often. Most people just commit, comment on how weird my name is. If it makes you feel any better, my name's pretty weird too. I'm Ether. I must admit I haven't met anyone by the name of Ether before. I like it though. Is it spelled A-E-T-H-E-R? Yep. You wouldn't believe how many people pronounce it wrong. The two shared a gentle laugh. I probably pronounced it wrong even. Ink slumped back onto the headrest and sank into a comfortable silence. Alright Ink, let's retrace our steps a bit. What's the last thing you remember before waking up? Let's see... Ink scratched his head. The simple task of remembering was proving more difficult than he'd anticipated. I guess I don't remember going to bed, so I can't rule out the possibility that I'd gone out drinking. I got a week off after all. Wait, what am I even saying? That doesn't make any sense. Hold on, I'm pretty sure today is the 19th. Most students have the week off. Oh yeah, were you out on a no on the for a night on the town? That's the thing, I told myself I wouldn't be going out this week. I was going to use the time to catch up on schoolwork. I'm pretty sure that last night I was holed up in my room studying. Weird. I'm pretty lame, huh? My kind of student actually spends his week off studying. I usually don't. No, that's not it. If yesterday was the 19th, then I don't think I went out either. If neither of us went out last night, what are we doing here? Is today even the 19th? I guess I'd better make sure. Ink lifted himself off his bed. It was only when he was standing up that he realised something was off. Ink could usually feel the weight of his cell phone, wallet and keys on his person, but today he felt especially light. He patted himself down, but it did no good. His jacket pockets had nothing in them. Ink scanned the room, searching for bed, searching the bed floor and armoire for his belongings. He came up empty. Damn it, where's all my stuff? Curiously, Ink did find something tucked away in his jeans pocket. He reached for it. The object he pulled out was alien to him. The device which resembled an old PDA had the date written across the screen. 379. 379? What the hell? No, that must be a 1, not a 7. Man, I'm out of it. So it is March 19th. That's one problem solved. But what is this thing? Where's my phone? Don't tell me you've got one too. This isn't mine. My phone looks nothing like this. Oh wow. She wasn't kidding. She's got the exact same model. My smartphone seems to have been swapped out for one of these, whatever it is. Really? That's too weird. I think they were handing them out somewhere? I am a sucker for free stuff. I don't know about that. Ink examined the PDA further. It appeared that the only menu option was contact. This device has had like 99% of its features removed. It's only letting me go to the contacts menu. Eh, scratch that. Contact menu. Singular. I've seen rotary phones with more features than this old thing. <laughs> well, let's see if contact actually does anything. Ink soon realised why the word contact wasn't pluralised. There was but a single name in the contact list. Sean Ward. Sean, finally. Something familiar. Sean, who's that? He's a good friend of mine. I'm going to text him and see if he knows what happened last night. He might have the scoop on the PDAs as well. Oh, I see. Something the matter? Nothing, really. It's just that the only person on my PDA's contact list is my dad. Did you shoot him a text? Nah, he'd be pretty mad if I told him I woke up at a hotel with some boy I don't know. Maybe you should send him something anyway. He might be worried about you. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, you don't have to tell him the whole truth. Jesus. Just say, hey, how's it going? Not, hey, I just woke up out of my drunken stupor in a hotel room with a boy I don't know. Let's see if this thing actually works. Sean, this is Ink. You there? Ink. What's with this? What's with what? What's with this PDA? Did you put it here? What do you mean? Were you the one that left it with me? What the hell are you talking about? This piece of junk was in my mailbox this morning. No return of address. You're the only name in the contact list and it doesn't seem to be able to do anything except send and receive texts from you. I tried texting you earlier to ask you about it, but you never got back to me. Am I wrong in assuming that this is from you? You still there, bruh? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what to say. Is this some kind of prank? Prank? You're the one who's pulling my leg, buddy. Cut the crap. Just tell me what happened last night. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Not sure how I wound up with this thing. I assumed you knew something since your name was in the contact list. Let me get this straight. You somehow wound up with a PDA that doesn't belong to you, which you're using to message me right now. Is that correct? Yep. Then we're in the exact same situation. I only have the, in a PDA of unknown origin that can only send and receive texts from you. You serious? 
Of course I'm serious. Are you being serious? This isn't another one of your jokes? That's a negative, friend. Don't trust me. I'm just as confused as you are. Do you remember what you were doing last night? Yeah, I was bar hopping with some other friends. Nothing out of the ordinary. Don't remember running into you, though. Well, if you're telling the truth, then someone must have given one to each of us. Weird. Do you have any idea where they came from? No, sorry. By the way, where are you right now? Dorm. And did anything out of the ordinary happen to you today? Nah, I've just been shitposting. You know where all morning. Why do you ask? I'm in a hotel with some girl I've never met. Not sure how I got there. Ooh, who's the lucky lady? She must be real special if she got you to leave your room on a weekday. Proud of you. Hey, it's not like that. I don't remember anything from last night. Neither does she. Sure, buddy. Come back to campus. I want to have a chat with you about your lady friend. Once I get my bearings, I'll be heading back. Anyway, text me if you remember anything about the PDAs. Talk to you later. See ya. Tucking the PDA back into his pocket, Ink turned to his new acquaintance. Ink suspected that he may not have contacted his... She may not have contacted her father after all. But suppose it was none of his business. So, what now? Just, uh... Just give me a moment to think this through. Ink sunk his head into his hands. Took a series of deep breaths as he mulled over what to do next. Need to figure out what happened to my wallet and phone before I do anything else. They aren't in this room. I know that much. It isn't impossible that I left them in my dorm or at a bar, but... Without my phone, it's hard to ask around him. Man, this is going to be a huge pain in the ass. You don't need to wait on me, you know. I was sort of hoping we'd be able to figure out what happened last night. You know, like, together? Right, I guess that'd be sens the sensible thing to do. Oh, don't look so glum, it'll be fun. Think of it like a real-life mystery novel. We'll make a pretty badass crime fighting duo, don't you think? You want to be the grizzled detective or the quirky psychic? Hmm... Hmm. Uh, Grizzled Detective. If I had to pick, I guess I'd be the detective. Not sure if I'd consider myself grizzled, though. I guess that makes me the sidekick. I don't mind if you take charge, but I get real upset if you don't come up with a snappy catchphrase. <laughs> Ink found himself smiling. Ether's enthusiasm was contagious. Alright then, my trusty sidekick, I think we ought to head out. Is there anything else you need to take care of before we leave? Nope. After you, detective. A frame on the wall caught Ink's attention as he was leaving. Four Elements Hotel and Suites. The Four Elements Hotel, huh? That's what it says. I don't suppose there's a Four Elements Hotel in Belbridge. Do you live in Belbridge by any chance? Well, yeah. I'm a psych student at Belbridge U. Ha! Looks like my guess was right. Though I suppose I wasn't much. it wasn't much of a stretch. You don't say. What year? I'm just a freshman. I haven't even chosen a psych specialization yet. I live in the dorms on campus. Well then, it looks like we're headed in the same direction. Except... Except? I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Except I'm sure that there's no hotel called the Four Elements anywhere in Belbridge. What? Where are we then? Beats me. Ink pressed his palm hard against his forehead in an attempt to jog his memory, but all it did was worsen his headache. He let out a loud sigh. Maybe we should head to the reception desk. At the very least, we can find out what city we're in. Yeah, good idea. With any luck, they'll have a lost and found, too. With ether and tow, Ink cracked open, the, cracked open the door and made his way into the hallway. I said crapped open. I like that. A large, eerie blue monitor was the first thing to grab Ink's, <laughs> grab Ink's attention. What was it doing in the hallway? Now, I put myself off by saying crapped. Transfixed on the screen, Ink was slow to notice that he and Ether weren't alone. To the right of the monitor were two people, both of whom approached him. The one on the right was a disheveled man in his mid-twenties. The one on the left was an elderly woman with calm countenance. Ink stared right back at them, wide-eyed. Looks like you were right. Hmm. The man sporting a hoodie looked back at the over to the oversized monitor. Would you two mind coming over here? You mean... us? Yeah, I need your help with something. Ink and Ether edged closer at him, to him at a slow pace, but the young man's request had Ink feeling uneasy. Before they arrived at the end of the hallway, Ink made a request of his own. Could you maybe find someone else to help you? I don't mean to be a pain, but my friend and I have a bit of a rough night. We need to get home as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with that. Ink scowled. Grabbing Ether by the wrist, he hurriedly cut between the two strangers. He reached for the door leading out. It's locked. See? What'd I tell you? Then this can't be the right way out of the hotel. Come on, we should check the other side of the hall. We've already had a look around. The doors are all locked. I'm afraid 
they can only be open for the other side. As much as Ink wanted to believe the old woman was just pulling his leg, the sternness in her voice suggested otherwise. Then what, we're trapped here? For now. I tried kicking the door down, but I wasn't getting anywhere fast. Suckers sealed tight. Where are the staff? Does the front desk know that this part of the hotel has been sectioned off? I haven't been able to get hold of any staff, but I doubt that anyone even works here anymore, so it's hardly a surprise. I guess we got to wait for the last person to wake up. Last person? What are you talking about? The stranger let out a sigh and pointed at the screen. I wish I could do something other than ask questions, but this is officially starting to worry me. Contestants? Two or five? What the hell does that mean? I would assume that refers to us. Couldn't be. Put your hand on the, uh, thing. And complied. The screen produced a quizzical beep, the display updated, and Ink's heart sank. Three or five. Well, that settles it. I guess you're a contestant after all. As a heads up, I did not sign up for this, whatever this is. Yeah, and I bet you've never had your handprint taken either. But there you go. Anyway, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the computer and door are connected. I'm thinking it'll unlock once it says five out of five. Ink was at a loss for words as he tried in vain to remember what he'd done to wind up here. Ether placed her hand on the screen, which now read, Contestants, 4 out of 5. Thanks. A, I, I just want to go home. It had taken a while for Ink to notice, but Ether had grown much quieter all of a sudden. Was she scared? Shy or just bewildered? Whatever the case, Ink figured he had best try to get everyone acquainted in an attempt to cheer Ether up. Uh, if we're going to have to wait for a fifth person, we might as well introduce ourselves. I'm Ink. Your name is Ink? I-N-K? Is that your real name or just a nickname? It's the real deal. My full legal name is Ink Greer. I study English at Belbridge University. I go to Belbridge University too. I'm a first year psychology student. Oh, I forgot to say my name, didn't I? I'm Ether. My name is Beth. Beth March. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Strange circumstances aside. And please, it's all mine, Beth. Following Ether's lead, Ink shot the old woman a small nod and a phony smile. My name's Ray. I'm a programmer, freelance. If you want something done quickly and done right, I'm your guy. You sound pretty sure of yourself. You famous or something? I ought to be. I'm good at what I do. Real good. Did you graduate from Belbridge, you? I hear good things about their computer science program. I was enrolled there for a bit, but I dropped out. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You can stop right there. I don't want your pity. I'm doing just fine without a degree. If anything, I should be pitying you for attending that joke of a school. Joke of a school? You guys are too young to understand, but one day you'll come to realise that your school is absolute trash. I can think of a thousand better ways to spend your time, and a million better ways to spend your money. Ether looked as though she had something to say, but was too afraid to speak up. Nick would love to have shut Ray up with a snappy retort for insulting his school, but he was unable to come up with anything clever. Just some friendly advice for you. The people that run that school- Oh, fuck. The sound of a closing door interrupted a mumbling Ray. Curious Ink looked around the room. A girl. Perhaps a few years younger than Ink had emerged from a door to his right. She glared at Ink, and then after a few seconds turned to Ray instead. You. What? You're Ray, I take it. Yeah, that's me. The new girl gave Ray a dirty look. She had a haughty air about her. Wait, how do you know my name? How long have you been eavesdropping on us? Pretty much this whole time. Eavesdropping? Why do that? Isn't it obvious? When you've been kidnapped, the most important thing to do is find out as much as you can about your captors. You guys weren't saying anything useful though, so I thought I'd just let you know that I was awake. You can ransom me off now. Chop chop. What makes you so sure you were kidnapped? I didn't see how you could come to that conclusion from listening to our conversation. Well, I certainly don't remember entering this hotel, which means that someone brought me here. Disgusting as that thought may be. Can you think of any reasons why someone would want to kidnap you? I'm sure you're all already aware of this, but my father and I are quite wealthy. Well, that was blunt. It's no use trying to trick me by talking about contestants or any of that nonsense. I had a feeling someone would try this eventually. I already notified my father and he says he'll pay whatever you demand. You've already notified him? How? The girl reached into her bag and pulled out a familiar trinket. The only thing this device seems to be able to do is contact my father. An intentional modification, I'm sure. You got one too, huh? Man, it's just my luck. Oh, is that what these things are? Wait, so everyone was given a PDA? Silence. The contestants all eyed each other. Just to make sure, does anyone have any idea how they wound up here? No. Nope. I'm afraid not. Nobody? Awesome. Just awesome. For the record, 
It isn't too late to admit you kidnapped me. Acting clueless, how predictable. I can't blame you for being cautious, but there's a fine line between caution and paranoia. Let's see if I can get it open up a little. Could you at least tell us your name? It's Lisa. Though, we all know you didn't have to ask. Cool, Lisa. Could you put your hand on that screen there? Absolutely not. Why would I help my captors? We didn't kidnap you, okay? Get that through your skull. <laughs> That's a laugh. Do you really expect me to trust some smarmy thug like you? You want to say that again? Just put your hand on that screen so we can open the damn door. You know what? I don't like your attitude. My attitude? You're the one who isn't cooperating. Seriously, could you be any more obnoxious? Well now I'm definitely not opening the door. It's probably some sort of kidnapper scheme anyway. Lisa, did you ever consider that the rest of us might also have been kidnapped? Exactly. Maybe I'm getting ransomed off too, ever think of that? Yeah, because when I think of people who would be worth abducting, the first that comes to mind is debt-addled university dropout. You know what my father says about people like you? He says that people who quit shouldn't even bother to try. Oh fuck off, you don't know a single thing about me. Stop, both of you. Beth, who had remained quiet for a time, interjected with surprising ferocity. Her rage disappeared as quickly as it had manifested. I don't think yelling at one another is going to get us anywhere. Lisa. Even if we were your captors, why would we trap ourselves in the same room as you? Wouldn't we want you to avoid seeing our faces? But, I... I suppose you have a point. And Ray. Would you mind being a bit more courteous to the young lady? She's in the same situation as the rest of us. I'm sure you can understand how stressful this is. Yeah, whatever. Now, will you two apologise to each other? The two mumbled at each other. Ink doubted either of them had actually said the word sorry, but Beth seemed happy enough that they were finished arguing. Wonderful. Now, Lisa, could you place your hand on that computer screen, please? Silently, Lisa did just she was asked. Or is it Liza? Maybe it's Liza. The screen went blank, then out of nowhere it appeared. Oh my, what on earth is that? It's uncanny as hell, whatever it is. Hello? Who are you? The terminal made a low humming sound before a hollow synthetic voice took over. Please note that the following message is a recording that will play only once. It is advisable that you pay attention. Did that thing say something? Shut up! Didn't you hear it? It's about to speak. Salutations, contestants! I pray you all had a most wonderful sleep. You're probably wondering why you're here. Actually, you're probably wondering many things. Fret not, contestants, for I have the answers you seek. Regrettably, I cannot divulge anything right now. You've... <laughs> only all just woken up, and I'm afraid some things I have to share are rather complicated. This is not the time nor the place to provide contestants with information, and for that, I must apologise. I'm sorry. So very sorry. In order to prove it to everyone that I am, in fact, very sorry, I've arranged a fun little puzzle for my favourite contestants. I am, of course, referring to the five of you. I think it'll break the ice quite nicely. Please, should, please do your best to solve it. Your instructions can be found in the top right corner of the screen. Once you think you've solved it, please press the check solution button, and place your hand on the screen to confirm your answer. Good luck and have fun, contestants. Oh, and I suppose I should mention that the door next to the room won't unlock until you've completed the puzzle, so yes, the puzzle is more or less mandatory. Lovely. What are those? Aren't you listening? It's a puzzle. Looks tile-based. But why? It seems so unnecessary. Well, that thing to call us contestants, it's pretty clear that this is some sort of game. This is stupid. Please tell me none of you actually intend to go through with this. Listen, I don't really know what's going on, but I want to get out of here as fast as possible. I'm giving this thing a go. It can't hurt to try, right? Sure. Turn a square into a plus. Okay. Can I move them? Oh, I see. Check. Hell yeah! It's how we do! I mean, it's only the first one. Don't get too confident, it's fine. There, <laughs> got it. Wait, how is this the solution? There's the cross right there. It's the blank space. Yeah, if you look at the negative space in the center of the puzzle, you can make out a cross. Oh, I get it. I never thought of doing it that way. Neat. That wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't. Well done, contestants. Well done indeed. You again. Please note that this is once again a recording that it will play only once. It appears that you've solved the puzzle I left here. I pray that you all had fun. I'm sure you're all eager to know why you're here. The truth is that this cramped hallway is ill-suited for such a conversation. I know, I know. I got your hopes up for nothing, and for that I'm truly sorry. Truly, allow me to make it up to you. Voila! The door is now unlocked. The next room is a fine little lounge. 
a little more, f a much more fitting place to disclose the rules of our wonderful game. I shall await you there. Go, move forward. Or you could die. Okay. It was clear that the polygonal figure was not, wasn't coming back. But then had trouble turning away. That last message had left him more confused and anxious than ever. The sound of a door opening managed to redirect Ink's gaze. As he looked about the room, he realized that they were the one they were one contestant short. I guess Ray already split. Beth and Liza followed him shortly after. Ink? Yeah? Did you think that guy was being serious when he said, or oh, you could die? Don't let it get to you, Ether. Hopefully this is just some jerk's idea of a joke. A cruel and needlessly complicated joke. If it is a joke, it sure isn't funny. Yeah, definitely not funny. But if it isn't funny, then why do I feel like laughing all of a sudden? Is it because none of this makes a lick of sense? I think you're crazy. Sure, let's go with that. Maybe this is all just a strange dream. Oh my gosh, Ink! Hmm? What is it? You're bleeding! Instinctively, Ink brought his hand to his nose. Sure enough, he felt a slick, warm substance that could only have been his own blood. Weird. Didn't even feel it. Ink stared at the blood on his hand, more curious than concerned. Then he felt it. There was a heavy, throbbing pain in his chest, growing, rising. Well, what's wrong? You don't look so good. It feels like there's something inside. Inside? What do you mean? Inside? Ink couldn't focus enough to reply. Something was pounding against his ribcage from within. He felt as if his heart was fighting to escape his body. What's hap- Ugh! Trying to talk was useless. Ink couldn't finish a thought, much less speak one. It had only been a few seconds, but the pain had already overtaken all other feeling. Caught in agony, Ink clutched his chest, his shut his eyes, and nearly blacked out. Why am I dying? He vomited. I guess he was right, or we could die. What the actual fuck? Ink stared at his hand, terrified. What happened to me? In chapter. Well, shit. That's crazy pants. Does that mean we can enter chapter two now? It does. Well, that's just about half an hour, so I'd say we should do a chapter and episode. So we're going to wrap this one up here and kick off chapter two in the next one. That. Man, the production value. This is a fucking browser game, and the production value is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, looking forward to getting back to it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking it out with me, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>